Howdy y'all, Luke Crawford here. Today I'm going to be doing a gear breakdown on the 2023 Mammoth Sniper Challenge. Um, if it looks like I'm limping, it's because I am. I finished Mammoth yesterday and am still recovering. <laughs> uh, so a quick synopsis, kind of what all we're going to talk about. I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, traveling to matches, that sort of thing. Um, then I'm going to talk about the shooting gear that I used and then I'm going to grab my clothing pack, that kind of thing, kind of show you what all I use to survive the weekend. Uh, and then I'm going to talk a little bit just about the match stages, that sort of thing, uh, that'll go a little bit beyond just gear. So let's get right into it. When I do these gear breakdowns, I like to always preface them with how I finished in the match. Uh, so this is a team competition I shot with my buddy Brian, and we finished 28th out of, I believe, 96 teams. Uh, this was our first team match together. Uh, I felt like we did a pretty good job. Um, definitely a ton of stuff we could improve on, but for our first team match um, and the amount of practice and work we put into practicing together, I felt like we did pretty well. Um, but I'd just like to kind of preface my videos with that because there's so much trash out on the internet coming from people that are really horrible shooters and uh, they're putting out YouTube videos on a daily basis encouraging you to buy something or believe in something um, and match scores are certainly not the end-all be-all uh, but I do think they do a really good job of uh, highlighting someone's shooting ability so let's get into the uh, shooting equipment and that's what we're going to talk about first all right so shooting equipment I'm going to start with the tripod first because that's kind of a uh, interesting piece of equipment for me in this match. So I brought a tripod, I carried it all day Friday, and then I left it behind at a stage. So it ended up in the lost and found, and I didn't have to carry it for the rest of the weekend. So tripods have a few different uses in a match like this. One of those is mounting your spotting equipment, binos, whatever on top to get more stable range finders. Another is mounting a gun directly to them. And another is using the tripod as some sort of support system, whether that is a rear tripod support. Uh, some guys were putting shooting bags on top, resting their pistols on them, that sort of thing. So I carried the tripod all day Friday and uh, a combination of just being sick of rucking and my pack feeling heavy and feeling like it was not helping me that much, I decided to ditch it, so I left it behind. That's not to say uh, that a tripod is a bad thing to bring to Mammoth. Um, the vast majority of competitors had them. I think a lot of people use them in ways that benefited them. Um, you know, who knows? All right, so let's start with the rifle. Um, this is the same rifle I used in my last video, the Tactical Games, if you watch that. So this is a Masterpiece Arms. Uh, they built the whole thing. And it is a 24 inch M24 Contour 6 Creedmoor. I have a Trigger Tech two stage diamond in it a Vortex Gen 2 Razor, a KGM Technologies R6 silencer with an Armageddon Gear silencer cover, and an Atlas bipod with their really right stuff, or with the really right stuff, Arca connector. Um, this rifle is awesome. I love this gun. Um, it shoots really, really well. Now, for this match, uh, this gun weighs right at 20 pounds. It is a pretty heavy gun compared to a lot of the other guns people have at these matches. Um, and when shooting competitions, a heavier gun tends to have a lot of benefits when it comes to absorbing recoil, being able to spot trace, um, your stability, and that kind of thing. So I went back and forth before this match kind of a lot of different ways. I had this gun ready to go. I knew it shot great. Um, I went so far as to even think about taking a SIG cross, but it had a short barrel, a lot of different things like that. All in all, I would say um, I'm really happy I brought this gun. It was not the most enjoyable thing to carry. If I shoot Mammoth again, I think there's a very good chance uh, that I will at least rebarrel this with a carbon fiber barrel. Um, the Vortex Gen 2 Razor is a really heavy scope. Uh, nobody will argue that one. Um, but with a lot of the stuff that you're doing in Mammoth, uh, that a really, like uh, a scope with great glass is really important. Um, there's stages in Mammoth, well, I'll get into all that later when I talk about kind of the match as a whole. So there's the rifle, um, set that down here. Ammo, I shoot factory ammo. I shoot the Hornady 6mm Creedmoor 108 grain ELD match. And 
I chronoed at the zero range, and I want to say I was right at 2,900 feet per second. Don't quote me on that, but I think that's right. Um, all right, next, mag carriers. I kept this super simple. This is a Kydex, just folded over pouch from a company called Talon Tactical. I think I bought this over 10 years ago when I was in college for a Glock mag. Super simple, crazy lightweight, just a belt slide. I brought one AICS pouch. Uh, I think maybe Tab Gear makes this. I cannot remember, but just has Molly on the back and I had some little malice clips, bungee to hold your mags in. Uh, that was pretty simple. A lot of guys brought like a whole shooting belt, but once again, my goal was save weight, save room, that kind of thing. Uh, my pistol, this is a Glock 45, which is a nine millimeter. Doesn't make a whole lot of sense, um, but it's a pretty much stock Glock 45 with a red dot. It's a uh, Type 2 RMR 3.25 MOA dot, and then Boresight Solutions uh, did the grip framework on here. They do an awesome job. I like stippling on all guns. This is my carry gun. I carry this thing every day. Um, I own 2011 CZ Shadow Twos, you know, all sorts of different stuff, uh, but for Mammoth, I figured super reliable, lightweight, um, and I probably gave up some pistol points. I mean, there's some tough pistol shots. I don't know, maybe I should have brought a 2011, but it's heavier, you know, who knows. Uh, holster, I used a Safariland ALS. Um, it's a DQ at the match if your pistol falls out. Uh, you don't have to wear your pistol at all times, so I pretty much stuck this in my pack all the time. I just um, had the ALS, uh, or ELS, I can never keep up with all their letters, belt clip on the back. Um, going on to just this uh, belt loop adapter. So basically, I wore a belt for the whole match, and when we'd get to a stage, I'd put my pouches and my pistol holster on my belt and put my gun on and get ready to go. Now, let's see. Oh, so I brought a Sharpie. I also brought two pins. Both of those pins broke. Um, you know, they say one is none, two is one, so I brought two pins, and one of them still broke. Um, but I, uh, I was okay. I have, I brought these right in the rain cards to do, um, uh, data cards and then also a, uh, little notebook for taking notes during the stage brief and that kind of thing. Um, but fortunately my partner had a pen and also I ended up just taking notes for the stage brief on my phone that worked out okay. But I was kind of surprised I broke two pens. Other stuff, ear protection. My partner and I both ran silencers. So we just brought these foamies and we wore those when we were shooting pistol or stages where we were shooting with people that had uh, braked guns and that kind of thing. So foamy, super light. I think I brought like four pairs of them, managed to lose none of them. Um, they were great. Armband, this is an Adidas, came from Academy or something like that. Definitely not Dick Sporting Goods, wouldn't buy anything from them. Um, this just has my, uh, my dope right here from 50 to 1200 yards for my six Creedmoor. And then, it basically has another pouch on top of this that I can slide a card in. So at the match, there was two stages out of 10 where we were given the distances. Everything else was blind. So when I had a known distance stage, um, I would take uh, one of my blank note cards and I would basically draw a range card and then slide this in here. And then if for some reason I needed to access other rifle dope, I could just rip it up and get to that. Um, so that's how I did things there. These are just uh, anti-fog wipes. Um, they're good to have around for, you know, scopes fogging up, um, eye pro, that kind of thing. A mill dot master, we did not have to use it this year at Mammoth, um, but they do tell you to come prepared for a milling stage, so I brought one. Um, I brought a Kestrel, and honestly, I really did not use the Kestrel much at all. The only, I used it on two stages where we had known distances, because here's the thing. Uh, you're on like, most stages are four or five minute part times. So you get started, you know, buzzer goes off, get up there and you got to find the target, shoot them. Well, find the targets, laze them, then shoot them. And so there's really no time to be like dialing in your Kestrel, you know, clicking 422, 423 to get to 425 yards. So um, fortunately shooting six Creed more, it's pretty fast. So, you know, if you're at, you know, if you go off here, you can take your, 250 dope and use it for 300 and it's still going to be pretty dang close but i uh, i pretty much just use this paper dope most of the time and then i also have these uh sig kilo 10k abs range finding binoculars these things were phenomenal um i've used the vortex the leicas the sigs they're all awesome they're all a huge asset in a match like this i think um 
This does have a like an arctic lamp here so that I could put it on the tripod, but like I said, I ditched that. Um, the, uh, the way um, that my teammate and I could have done better with this is he had range finding binos without applied ballistics. Mine had them with applied ballistics and mine had my dope saved in here. We should have swapped binos so that way, you know, when he would range a target while I'm on the gun, he could then look through here and give me my exact dope. But that all worked out. I just tied some paracord around them so that on a stage, you know, I could toss them over me. And as far as the bag goes, I brought a Armageddon Gear Game Changer pint size with Get Light Fill. This thing's awesome. Also doubled as my pillow, very stable. To go along with that, I brought my trusty Gray Ops uh, Gamer Plate. These come with brass weights. I took those out of it. Um, but I brought this uh, to the tactical games too, and it's light enough, but man, the stability it provides, you clamp that on the bottom of your gun, put it on this bag, it's awesome. I think that was well worth the wait. Now, as far as uh, mags and guns, or mags and ammo go, I brought them in a DACA pouch here. I brought two of these uh, Masterpiece Arms mags with their uh, extensions, so they held 14 rounds each. That worked out great. Uh, I think only one stage did I ever need two mags. I brought two pistol mags. Um, these are the Magpul 21 rounders. Um, I brought these because 21 rounds is uh, more than the stock 17 that fits in here. And these are lighter than stock Glock mags. And if you want to get a stock Glock mag to hold this, you got to put an extension on it. So these are light. Um, I did order some CCI aluminum uh, 9mm to bring because basically I think I could have cut like a quarter pound, but it didn't come in in time. Brought brass case ammo. That was fine. Um, as far as ammo goes, I brought 150 rounds of six creed more, which was way too much. Uh, part of that was probably my shooting ability um, and just the or our team's performance because uh, we had some stages like where secondary shot first and I got like two shots off before we timed out or something like that. Um, and then I brought 75 rounds of pistol ammo and I think I finished with, I can't tell how many are in here, but less than 10. So I think that worked out well. Um, so that kind of covers all the shooting stuff, and uh, next I'm going to get into what I guess I would call the support gear, um, which would be like my clothing pack, that kind of thing. So we'll get on to that now. Now I'm going to get into my uh, sustainment and survival gear, I guess you could call it. Um, so first off, I'll start with boots. Boots are obviously uh, very important for Mammoth. Um, I saw a lot of bad blisters. I ended up with uh, two small ones on the bottom of my feet. I think that was just uh, due to the type of preparation I did for this match, which I'll get into a bit later. Um, but I ran these uh, McCray boots. I can't remember exactly what model they are, but I can link that in the comments. Um, I think Terrasol. And I used the Superfeet insoles. These are awesome. They're kind of a like a military style boot, I guess. And uh, they're made here in the USA. Uh, they are not Gore-Tex, which a lot of people go back and forth on whether you should wear Gore-Tex or not for rucking. Um, the thing with Gore-Tex is it keeps water out, but they're definitely less breathable, so then your feet sweat more, um, especially a match like this where there's no rain uh, forecasted. I think these are a great move. So, McCray boots. Um, I pro. I wore these Oakley Tombstones. Um, one thing with these is they're designed to be worn under over the year over the ear uh, or under over the ear ear protection so if you don't have those on they can sometimes slip off so I got one of these little cable things I basically just the whole match even rucking kept these around my neck so they wouldn't get crushed or something but these worked well um, the match uh, required you to wear eye pro when shooting pistol and required you to shoot required you to wear ear pro on a couple stages like I said we shot suppressed so there are some stages where I uh, did not use either. Um, I brought some AirPods. These were phenomenal. I wore uh, those on the longer ruck. Sometimes you'll do like a 0.4 mile ruck and there you just, you know, you got like six minutes. So I wouldn't bother. But for the longer rucks, I'd listen to a podcast. It was nice, helped kind of pass the time. And I used an app on my phone uh, called Run Tracker that was pretty cool. It'd track, you know, your course and your rucking. And then every five minutes, you can set whatever duration you want, but it'd give you an update. So, you know, it'd say, 20 minutes, uh, 1.6 miles, average pace, 14.30 per mile. So that was kind of nice that I was getting those updates without having to even look at my watch or anything like that. Um, trekking poles, these are probably 
another kind of um, a piece of gear that people argue a lot over. I find them to be a huge advantage uh, when rucking, not only uh, to help keep yourself from falling, uh, but from what I've seen in the various like science and studies behind them is they really do take a lot of load off of your legs. Um, these are made by Lecky, I think that's how you say it, but they're carbon fiber, super lightweight. These things were most excellent. Very glad I bought the, brought those. Clothing. I wore this Sitka setup, so I was dressed in camo the whole camo the whole match. Um, so this is a Sitka top. It's like a basically designed for like hot weather. Think like a sun shirt. Um, and then these pants. These are maybe called ascent pants. I can't remember. Maybe it says here. No, it does not. I'll put a link in the comments to all this stuff. Um, but these are a pretty lightweight pant. They got a lot of pockets. They have built-in knee pads, which was nice because some people would bring knee pads, some people wouldn't. These are built-in and super light, so kind of nice when you're uh, either done with a ruck and you just want to collapse down on your knees and relax for a second before you fall over, um, or on stages, you know, it helped uh, protect you. So I wore these Friday through Sunday, same pair the whole time. Um, haven't washed them yet. They're pretty nasty. Um, I brought an Arteryx jacket. This is a Atom, I think, something like that. Uh, but basically, when I get up in the morning, I'd put this on, you know, at the campsite. I'm making coffee, that kind of thing, kept me warm. And then every morning, we'd have to walk like about six tenths of a mile to our start point. So I'd keep this on for that, keep me warm. And then basically, right before the ruck, I would take it off and just shove it in this mesh pouch of my backpack. Um, because when rucking, I didn't want any layers. So the pack I'm running, this is a um, Osprey pack. I actually bought this at a REI scratch and dent sale for like 50 bucks because it had a hole in it. And I love this pack. This is the Atmos 50 AG. So as far as packs goes, you'll see a wide gamut of them at Mammoth. You got military guys running those like traditional, I guess they're called Alice packs or something like that. Um, you see a lot of like Mystery Ranch elderly stock uh, Kui, Sitka, some of the packs that are more designed around, I guess, tactical hunting, shooting, that kind of thing. Um, the big thing I love about this pack um, is it's really light. So a lot of those like tactical packs, you know, they're built to take into warfare. Um, so like I have some elderly stock packs, love them for certain things, uh, but they tend to be very heavy. Um, this pack is super comfortable. It carried the load well. Um, the, the cover photo for this video shows me rucking so you can see how I carried my rifle. But basically, I just uh, had the pack here. This rifle would go horizontal, and then I just cut this across, cinched it down real tight, and carried the rifle horizontally. That's a bit of a pain because it's sticking out in both directions, um, but that really wasn't a problem. I mean, we were rucking on the side of roads or gravel roads the whole time. It's not like you're having to you know, go through doorways and stuff, so that worked just fine. And it kept the gun basically very close to me. A lot of people would strap their rifle like right here vertically on the back of the pack. The issue with that is that it's pulling you back the whole time and I'm not a fan of that. So as far as what all's in here, obviously all this gear I just showed you was um, a PT belt. This was an army thing. They required us to have one of these uh, while we were rucking since we were on an army base. So I had that on there. Um, this pack's cool because you can access it from the top or the bottom. So kind of the center of the pack is where I put stuff that I only needed to pull out at night, which was basically uh, my half of the tent. My partner and I split it, so I carried like the poles in the tent. He carried the rain fly um, and the, the footprint. So tent, sleeping bag, and sleeping pad kind of all went in the middle. And then on the bottom, I would open this up, and this is where I kept that DACA pouch with my mags and ammo because I wanted the uh, the heavier stuff kind of down at the bottom of the pack to balance things inside the heavy rifle up top. I also put like my uh, the rear bag, that game changer, my the the LRF binos, that kind of thing went in there. Um, and then at the top, this has two zippered pouches. So the very top zippered pouch was kind of like a snack and accessory pouch. So. The stuff I had in here was, I brought a bunch of, um, I'll dive into all the food in a second, but I'll go ahead and talk about kind of the snack supplementary feeding. Um, so I brought a bunch of Honey Stinger waffles. I love those. They taste really good and they're pretty nutritious. I brought a bunch of hoist powder, which is one of the many like electrolyte powders. Um, then I brought like some Snickers, 
Um, I had a few other, I brought like some pre-workout. I took that before some of the longer, like four to seven mile rucks. Um, and then I had like my foam earplugs. I brought an iPhone cable to keep my phone charged. My teammate carried a battery uh, bank charger, um, headlamp, the lens cleaning cloths. I brought a tiny little first aid kit. Um, so with a match like this, you know, some guys were carrying like the full IFAC with, um, you know, their tourniquet and quick clot and all that. My mentality here was we have medics everywhere. So, you know, if I get shot or something like that, um, they have all the medical supplies. So why do I need to carry them? but that's kind of a UBU kind of thing. This tiny little first aid kit, I brought like moleskin, band-aids, uh, melatonin to go to sleep. That was helpful. I went to bed most days at like 7 p.m. to help me fall asleep. Um, some chapstick, athletic tape. I think I already said moleskin, but I got some small blisters on my feet, so I used moleskin there. I also had spare batteries for the Kestrel and the LRF. Um, I think that was all that was in that top pouch. I think I already said my headlamp. So that all went there. Then this next bigger pouch is where I put a lot of the shooting stuff. There's a lens cloth that I brought. Um, but that was where I put like my mill dot master, my mag pouches, my arm board, pins, sharpie, that kind of thing. Um, and then this pack also has some front pouches, which you can see here. I have some M&M wrappers, some raisins that are still left over, one Snickers bar that I did not eat. Uh, but these I would kind of like fill based on the ruck. Um, I did not bring water on any ruck except for the last seven miler there. I had like a, basically they gave us water bottles. Every stage and campsite, they just had like pallets of water bottles. So there was always water, which was nice. So you didn't have to carry it all the time. Um, but on the shorter rucks, I never brought water. The long one, I brought one bottle. That worked out perfect, but I would kind of like pack these front packs with the stuff I wanted. Um, so then inside here, here we have, um, this is my food bag. So basically all my food was in this stuff sack here. And um, not everything's here because I ate it and ditched some of it. And like I said, the match was yesterday. So in here, I basically had three Ziploc bags labeled Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Those were my like three, one bag for each day. And each bag would have some snacks, like some more of the Honey Stinger waffles. Uh, maybe, you know, I had a candy bar for each day, some peanut m and some MRE cookies, different stuff like that. And then freeze dried food and then a meal replacement that I made. So um, the only time I did freeze dried food was at night just because I didn't want to hassle with pulling out a stove during the day. Um, so to start off in the mornings, I would just drink some coffee and eat like a, a honey stinger waffle or something. I'm not a big breakfast eater and didn't do it here is all right. And then generally after our first morning ruck, at that stage, I would do a meal replacement. So these were a thing I made myself um, off of a recipe I found from, I think it was a guy who does a lot of like long, long big time backpacking, ultra light hiking. And uh, so I brought this shaker bottle and I basically for each day had a Ziploc that was like that big. And it was a mixture of um, powdered milk, chia seeds, oats, peanut butter powder, a um, couple other things. Like I said, I'll link to that recipe. But basically one of those pouches was I think 660 calories. So I did one of those as kind of like a, I don't know, breakfast at maybe 8 a.m. or something like that. They tasted great, that worked very well. And then I would just kind of snack all throughout the day. And then at dinner time, um, I had my mountain house. And so how I did, well, I did all mountain house. A lot of guys have been telling me about peak refuel. They say that's like the new hot thing, but I've had mountain house for a long time. Uh, but I would typically eat two mountain house meals for every dinner, try to get like a thousand calories for dinner. Um, but one thing I did that saves you some weight, but really saves you a lot of space is I repackaged all the mountain house into just little sandwich bags. And then I use this, this is a made by Hyperlite Mountain Gear. So it's basically just an insulated pouch. But what I would do is take the Ziploc, put it in here, boil my water. I'll show you how I did that. Dump it in there and then seal this pouch up and let it sit 10 minutes, pull it out, eat it. Um, so that's how I did that. Spoons, uh, I brought two MRE spoons, just the cheap light plastic ones, threw these away on the last day. Um, and then my cooking equipment, I brought two lighters. And 
then I brought a MSR pocket rocket. This is just like a little backpacking stove that screwed on top of a fuel canister. I threw the fuel canister away before the last are up. Uh, that worked very well. This is a titanium cup. This one's made by GSI. It's nice because it has a lid. So in the morning I'd make coffee in here and then you can drink it. It also has this little insulating layer so you could like do coffee, hold it. Um, but I'd use that to boil water. It's just a titanium cup. So that covers all the food. Now I'll get into sleep stuff. So as far as sleeping, like I said, my partner and I split our tent. So here's my tent. I think I have the stakes in there, the tent poles. And as far as my tent, it's a REI half dome too. I bought it a long time ago. It's a two man tent, weighs about five pounds. I really like it. I've had it a long time, uh, but I do think there's probably some newer and better technology. Uh, so that's something I might look into upgrading to. Sleeping pad, this is an old Thermarest self-inflating. Um, this is another thing. I mean, I can't remember how much this weighs. It's not too heavy, but I think there's probably some better tech that I might look into to drop some weight there. And then my sleeping bag is right here. This is a Mountain Hardware Lamina 15 degree bag. Um, this is really too warm for this trip. I did not need a 15 degree bag, but I had it, I brought it. I had another 20 degree bag. They weigh about the same. I figured I'd just bring that just in case. Um, I stayed warm every night. So that's it for sleeping gear. As far as clothing, so I brought socks just in a Ziploc bag, and I brought four pairs of socks, basically one for each day and an extra. And then I dumped a bunch of foot powder in them beforehand, which uh, maybe helped, I guess. Um, but I did that, and my socks worked great. They were all darn tough socks. They're a wool sock, they wick, they do a good job. Um, so that is pretty much everything there. Uh, as far as any other clothing stuff, no, I did not wear my cowboy hat. I left that in the car. Um, I brought two pairs of underwear, started the match in one, brought one spare. They're Lululemon, some pretty fancy underwear, but they work great, they're super comfortable. Um, like I said, I wore that same uh, shirt and pants for the whole match, never brought anything else. Um, obviously, we ended up with pretty nice weather. It was not that cold. I think our coldest morning, it was maybe like 30 uh, when we got up. Now, I had a whole bucket of other stuff that was in my car that, you know, the night before in the hotel room, I left behind. And that was like thermal layers, uh, basically all, you know, beanies, gloves, just cold weather gear, rain jackets. Um, ended up not needing any of that. As far as like anything else I brought that's not here, uh, I brought a trash bag um, that got thrown away before the last truck. Um, I brought spare batteries for my headlamp. I threw those away and threw away the batteries in my headlamp. Less weight, you gotta carry the better. Um, but that's pretty much it as far as uh, everything I brought. Um, feel free to ask me any questions in the comments or if you want to find me, you know, Facebook, Instagram, any of that. I'm happy to answer any questions you might have. And now I'm going to talk a little bit just about the stages and kind of how the match ran. So stay tuned. All right, so how the match actually ran. So it is a three-day match. You shoot Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. You have a zero range Thursday. So we got into a uh, base on Thursday. We stayed on base. That was nice. Stayed close by. We went confirm zero. I always recommend confirming zero before a match. Um, we only had a two hour drive since it was here in Georgia, but especially, you know, you fly that kind of thing. It's just always a good idea. I always confirm zero and I always get a uh, velocity on my gun uh, at the actual range. So I brought my magneto speed, did that. Um, so Friday morning, basically every morning started off waking up around 4.30. And I think normally the first ruck would start at like six. Uh, maybe 6.15 one day. Um, but basically, uh, we all parked our cars and they had a big stage. We did the first match brief. We went to a spot. We took off. So we started off Friday. We did a 4.8 mile ruck or something like that to one location. We shot two stages there, rucked like a mile or so, mile and a half to another location, shot two stages there, then rucked three point something back to the campsite. Saturday was kind of similar, but it was three point something to one range area. And then we shot four stages over there. But between the stages, we 
do like a 0 0.4, 0 0.5 mile ruck. So they're just like quick, fast rucks. And then we had a longer, like almost four mile ruck back to camp that day. Then Sunday, uh, we rucked three point something miles to one location, shot a stage. There's only three stages on Sunday. So I think I said 10 stages, there's only nine. Um, but on Sunday, we rucked three point something out to this range area. And on Sunday, they basically have the range set up to where there's uh, everybody shooting at once. So you have like, let's say 10 duplicate stages and 10 squads all on one big army range. So we'd all shoot together and then move. So we uh, we did that and then we brought like, you know, a point four over somewhere, shot, everybody shot a stage there. And then we had the big uh, ruck home, which was 7.43 miles, I think. It was like just under two hours. Um, so that was kind of the flow of the match, the rucking, that kind of thing. Um, as far as the stages, the thing I found to be the most difficult about stages at Mammoth is finding the target. So no targets are painted and they're oftentimes kind of like hidden in the shadows, the trees, or you're just on these army ranges that are so big, way bigger than anything, uh, you know, we're used to as civilians and trying to find, you know, one steel plate at 800 yards in a square mile of field. Uh, that's not painted can be quite difficult. So that was kind of the hardest part, the actual uh, shooting. There was no uh, positions or targets really that I thought were just like impossible to get. Um, the Sunday, there was a stage um, that I don't think anybody really loved. It was uh, basically a 12 round rifle stage and you shot four rounds standing, four rounds kneeling and four rounds prone. So your target was a 50% or 70% IPSC at right around 300 meters. Um, and standing, you could not use a sling completely unsupported. Kneeling, once again, no sling, and you couldn't even put your butt on your ankle. And then prone was any supports, you know, bipod and rear bag. So what we did and what I think a lot of people did is they burned through those standing and kneeling shots pretty quick. Um, we got no points on the stinger and kneeling. I mean, I just could not get this gun stable on a 300 yard target from a completely unsupported standing. Um, and then we went to prone and, uh, you know, got, got all my, they were pretty easy points from there. Um, but that's kind of a breakdown of like the, the stages and, uh, kind of the match. I know that's a pretty quick summary. If y'all want, I could maybe do another video that dives into more of that deeper, um, but now I'll give just a little bit of talk about kind of my preparation for the match and uh, get into that. Preparation. Okay, so preparation is very important for a match like this. It's really important for any match you go to. I don't care if it's like a one day PRS match where you're practically shooting out of your car and you can bring, you know, everything you want with you. Being prepared for a match is important. Uh, some of the ways I do that for typical matches is a, I've mentioned before checklist. I like checklists. I'm a pretty forgetful person. So checklist help me make sure that I'm bringing everything I need to and that I have it all. So I have checklists for Mammoth, packing lists, that kind of thing. Um, as far as physical preparedness for Mammoth, uh, there's a lot of people that do all sorts of different things. Um, in my research and reading on rucking, I basically found that rucking is not really good for you. Um, it's bad for your knees, bad for your hips, bad for your ankles. So my mentality was be strong enough that I can carry a heavy load for that distance and maintain that strength leading up to Mammoth. But as a whole leading up to Mammoth, I think I did two practice rucks. Um, both of them with like a 70 pound pack with basically with everything on here, you know, gun, everything loaded up. And the main reason I did those was just to make sure that you know, everything sat right. My gun wasn't falling off. My pack wasn't falling apart. Uh, but most of my preparedness was just like two months before I kind of knocked my diet back in check a little better, you know, getting rid of sugar and sweet. Cause I figured any, uh, fat I can get rid of is extra weight. Um, so I did that and then I was doing CrossFit three to four days a week and some running. Um, I'm six foot four, so rucking for me is uh, not super hard um, just because I have a really long stride. I think some people um, that are, uh, you know, shorter, it's going to be more difficult. You probably need to spend more time under load out rucking, just getting used to how much you need to run versus walk. Um, because, for instance, on the very last seven mile ruck, 
I, um, I started off, I ran probably the first like minute and a half just to kind of get in front of the pack because they started all teams at once. And then I just walked the whole time. I mean, I was taking good strides and walking hard, but I think my pace other than this big hill at the end was in like the 14 something range the whole time. So the rucking part for me, it hurt. Um, my foot's pretty sore. I got some uh, plantar fasciitis, I think it's called, going on that w I think was just the you know, abuse of your feet at a match like this. Um, but that's kind of the preparation I did. You know, I made sure I had all my gear ready. I had checklists and I just made sure I was kind of generally in good shape or I guess great shape compared to the world or compared to the world, really, really great shape because we have a lot of fat people these days that don't exercise. Um, but yeah, that's a uh, just kind of summary of uh, the gear I brought to Mammoth, why I brought it, that kind of thing. If you have any questions, once again, feel free to let me know. And I greatly appreciate you uh, taking the time to watch me talk about this. So, thanks.